This is my fifth video in the smartwatch programming series using the Crow Panel ESP32 C3 1.28 inch IPS capacitor touch display. In part 3 and part 4 of this series, we designed two GOIs one for a digital watch and the other one for an analog watch. It displays the correct time because before uploading the actual code, I had already set the custom time using this set of instructions. Now, let's say I move to a different time zone and need to change the time. I would have to go through that tiring process again, connecting the smartwatch to the laptop, uncommenting these instructions to set the custom time, uploading the code, then commenting these lines again, and finally uploading the actual code. It's a long, tedious process. Clearly, this method isn't practical for everyday use, and it's time to explore a better, more user-friendly approach to setting the time. We can do it the easy way by using the drop-down menu. With that, we can individually set the hours, minutes, and seconds without any need to reconnect the smartwatch to a laptop or modify the code repeatedly. The drop-down menu provides an intuitive and flexible way to input custom values directly from the device itself. You can not only use the drop-down menu for setting the date and time, but you can also use it in thousands of other projects for example, you could use it to select options such as modes for a device, a list of numbers for configuration settings, names for assigning tasks, or even predefined text messages to send quickly. Its versatility makes it a valuable component in GUI design for various applications. In this video, we will focus on using the drop down menu to set a custom time. By the end of this video, you will see how easy and efficient it is to add this functionality to your projects, saving time and effort while making your smartwatch much more user-friendly. So without any further delay, let's get started. Let's continue with the same project. While screen 2 is selected, add two drop-down widgets, one for setting the hours and the other for setting the minutes. If you want, you can also add a third one for setting the seconds. Next, name the drop down widgets so that we can easily find them in the variables list on the Arduino side. Next, while the drop down widget is selected on the inspector tab, go to the drop down and write the options. Follow the same steps for the other drop down widget. Next, we need to add two events for the two drop down widgets. For this, while the drop down widget is selected, click on the Add Event button. Set the trigger type to value change. Set the action type to call function. Next, click the add button. Write the function name. Now follow the same steps for the other drop down widget. Now let's save the project and export the UI files. In part 3, I already explained where to find the screen properties, how to enable support for large fonts, and how to locate all the variables. I recommend watching part 3 to learn how to avoid errors. There is just one thing you need to do every time you generate new UI files. Change LV color 16 swap from 0 to 1. Now, let's go to the main Arduino file. For the drop-down menu, you need to copy and paste these functions into your previous Arduino file. And let me tell you, if you want to make everything easier, simply copy this template folder. It includes all the files with all errors already fixed for you. You can download this template folder for free from my Patreon page. Anyway, the code is ready. Let's click the upload button.
The code has been successfully uploaded. Now you can see the drop down menus are added to the digital watch. And now I can set the hours and minutes in just a few seconds. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode. And thanks for watching.